So I recently went to my community page on my channel here and asked you guys if you had any questions about Halo Infinite or Halo in general. And you guys certainly responded. If you want to take part in the next Q&A, make sure you tap subscribe because apparently 77% of you are not. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo and gaming, well, you know what to do then. Ninja of Opulence asked, do you think more flood items should have been put into the battle pass instead of being mostly delegated to the shop bundles? Because when you look at the battle pass alone here, you do get the one free chest piece attachment, right? here for your mark 5b which does look great but everything else is kind of saved to the very end right the last 41 through 50 tiers you get basically an entire armor set for the flood customization within the battle pass even though this part is paid this is not part of the free tiers of the battle pass so technically you still have to pay for it it's still a micro transaction though you definitely do get more out of their bang for your buck because it's only ten dollars for the entire pass compared to what you have in the store but i think it's a pretty good amount of customization they gave you within the battle pass though within the shop i would say you do get a lot of extra stuff right like you get the little cool mohawk you get the flood form of or the rocket launcher which if you do buy into the battle pass you do get the flood shotgun so there is a little bit of parody there so i think it's more like you kind of get more of what you're getting within the battle pass so i don't really feel like it's relegated to just the store you just kind of get more of it like we do get like shoulder pads and knee pads within the battle pass as well uh just got a little bit more of it in here which i would say maybe does kind of look a little cooler than the one that's in the battle pass but i mean that's kind of the whole deal when it comes to these free-to-play games that you kind of have to like save like the really cool stuff for what's going to be in the shop because you know it's still free to play the game they still need to make some form of money off of it and you definitely do get a lot within this bundle that's what 2800 credits so that's a good amount of customization if you really like the flood stuff you can go for it uh me personally i'm not about to splurge that kind of money on this because oh even though the flood customization is awesome i'm glad it's there for people like this helmet cracked like look it's just so amazing it's so well done that at least you're getting some of it within the battle pass as well so i don't really feel like most of it's delegated to the shop i feel like if you just want more of what you're already getting within the battle pass then you get it within the shop kind of thing now if it was only in the shop then you definitely would be having some issues with the community now if there was some way to earn those credits to spend on things like this you might have some more engagement which leads us into our next question cheese lover 2110 asks do you think Think they will add an option for free credits because right now the only way to earn credits is within the paid tier of the battle pass which gives you enough credits back to then buy another battle pass of course you can kind of spend them however you like so that's up to you how you want to spend them though i would say it is rather industry standard to let players earn enough credits within the paid battle pass to then buy the next battle pass though we do see other games offer players free credits within their own free tiers of battle passes for example if you look at call of duty's battle pass right now i have not paid into this i'm playing on the free tiered version of this and so you have some items that get locked away, but you can see like right here, for example, when I click into this set of items for this pass, that like I can earn 100 COD points I can use within the store. And I've unlocked a few of these sectors right here, which kind of helps me want to grind more to earn more COD points so I could utilize them in the store if I feel like I really want to. I've earned enough COD points right now where I'm about to 1,100 credits. So that's enough to really could probably spend on something or go towards something within the store. So then like if you want to jump into more, some of these more expensive of packs right like this 1800 credit point right here like i have just almost enough to where it's like okay just a couple extra bucks and i get the entire like doom outfit when it comes to playing the game which i think is something that's really great it would be highly incentive for 343 to think about when it comes to buying into these bundles and giving players some more credits because i think the biggest hurdle when it comes to these free-to-play games is getting people to kind of spend the money to actually keep the game afloat kind of stuff and i think if you give players a little bit of credits along the way while you play the game for free it will incentivize them to keep playing for one and also get that chance to experience what it's like buying things within the store because i feel like it's like a hard thing to kind of break through but once you break through that seal or wall whatever analogy you want to say for it i think that really would help kind of change the sentiment around like the whole like store model that we have for the free to play halo infinite experience because yeah i broke down and i bought lilith in the game because one i love diablo and i think it's just like a really cool aesthetic and it's one of my favorite game series and so i'm a total 
fanboy when it comes to this. So yeah, I bought into this character, but that's because I already had points built up from the free tier pass, and I spent a little extra cash to get it while I was in the store. But would I have spent the money to get Lilith if I didn't already get the free tiers when it comes to the COD points? I don't know. But ultimately, yeah, I do feel like players should have a free way to earn points so you can experience what it's like to buy something within the store to kind of ease that dirty feeling you get when you spend extra money on microtransactions within these games. Ness asks, speaking as long time Halo players, how far do you think Halo has come since initial release? It's very interesting because Halo kind of exploded into the gaming scene, right? And they didn't really kind of like was like startup that kind of came from nothing and then kind of grew into something. It just exploded onto the scene back in 2001 and just dominated the first person shooter genre on consoles. So we've always had this impression that Halo is a premier title within the gaming industry. The fact that Halo has continued this long, 20 plus years of this franchise continuing on to make games and experiences for people to enjoy speaks in itself that people love Halo. Now, maybe a little bit less than in the past, but there still is a audience of dedicated people who really enjoy the games. Be it now, I think more of it lies on nostalgia rather than current relevancy like it was back in the early 2000s on the original Xbox and Xbox 360 days. But we all know the population numbers, at least on Steam, when it came to release day, like there was a lot of people playing Halo Infinite. There still is a want and a need and an audience of people who want to play this franchise. As someone who's lived since the beginning of Halo, right back on the original Xbox system linking all those nights and stuff like that. There's one difference I've really noticed between Bungie and 343 and it's not really just the games themselves which obviously there's a huge difference. It's more in the way of how Halo is marketed. Previously like yeah you had some toys maybe with Bungie you had a couple books here and there but it was really like the games. So that's what it was all about. I feel like once 343 and Microsoft had full control over the Halo franchise we started seeing a lot more things available for fans to engage with. We've definitely seen a lot more books even seen some more media like a whole tv show depending how you feel about it i thought it was all right a lot more merchandise like you got your little toys you got your handguns you got your different types of product collaborations like we had the dr squatch soap one right we had like, oh, your own coding with that of course you got mountain dew i mean mountain dew even has a feature playlist now coming in with season five for the combined arms operation we've seen a lot more comics we've seen a cookbook and things like that so i think they've tried to expand beyond what halo is beyond just the games themselves but also highly focus on the games on top of that but i think more just finding ways to market and sell halo in different ways beyond just the video games which i think bungie was really focused on just the games honestly i would say as a halo fan within the last like 10 years of experience we've probably had more things to engage with when it comes to halo related content but maybe that content maybe hasn't been exactly what you've been wanting it to be but there certainly has been more of it the interesting thing is what the future of halo is going to be like right because halo has gone through its cool new game experience back in the early 2000s then during the mid 2000s the later 2000s we had Halo being one of the top shooters out there that everyone was playing to then losing a bit of relevancy and being you know hated on and stuff like that and then seeing a bit of a resurgence recently though I think most of that resurgence is based off of nostalgia rather than people thinking like oh I want to experience a brand new Halo game and stick with it. Does 343 lean more into that nostalgia side of things or do they try to go in a whole new route because we've seen what the new route has been for the last 10 years for Halo and it's had mixed reviews but if you lean strictly on nostalgia it'll be almost like a remaster game and people will play it for like a month and then just drop it. Halo Infinite was so close to just nailing that experience of being like a new game while also leaning heavily into nostalgia. But is Halo going to have the ability to appeal to the newer, younger crowd? Or is it going to be kind of a game that appeals to audience like me in their mid 30s? Shad Tracy asks, what's your favorite Halo level and why? I have to say my favorite Halo level of all time would probably would be Delta Halo from Halo 2. I think that the intro cutscene's amazing. You walk right into the action right off the rip. You're blowing stuff up. You got these ancient ruins mixed in of Forerunner tech and stuff like that. You have a good mix of on foot gameplay as well as vehicle gameplay. Now I could break it down to every little section about why I love Delta Halo so much, but I think I could save that into an entire video. If you guys want to see that, leave a hashtag Delta Halo in the comments down below. And I'll make an entire video about why I love that level so much. Juggernaut Zero asks, what are your top five hopes for returning weapons in Halo Infinite? Funny thing you should ask because I actually made a top five weapons I would like to see returning in Halo Infinite video even before the game released back in 2020. So if you want a detailed version of why I chose these weapons, I would highly suggest checking out that video. I'll link it in the pinned comment down below or at the end of this video. One, I would say the Brute Shot because while well, a huge focus on the Banished, yet 
need more banished weapons of what's more brute like than a brute shot. Personally, I would like to see the Halo 2 version of the brute shot combat because it had a bit of a ricochet effect to it and it had a different kind of shooting technique. You would have to utilize it. And if you knew how to use it correctly, it was very powerful. But if you're just kind of a new player just shooting right at stuff, Sometimes it wouldn't really work out in your favor. Two, I would say the sticky detonator because it was just a such a unique weapon within Halo Sandbox back in Halo 4. There were so many interesting things you could have done with it. Some fun trolley kind of ways you can play around with it. Some really interesting things you could do for it that just was so unique within the Halo Sandbox. We've never seen anything like that before. And I think it'd be really cool to see it come back within the game. Three would be the flamethrower just because of how badass a flamethrower is. Now, initially I thought that the flood was gonna be part of Halo Infinite, so I thought that the flamethrower would be very necessary against the flood as it's a very effective tool. But I think also it's just like a new gen, right? A new Halo game. You have new physics and particle effects you can utilize that make fire look even better than it did previously. But I think the biggest hurdle with a flamethrower is that most of the times with these weapon effects that we have, they're playing at 30 frames per second and look kind of choppy compared to if it was a smooth 60 frames of animation. I think it'd be really cool if you had an ability to just like lay down a line of fire on the ground and it actually would stay there for a while. Say like in a map, like an infection, they had a bunch of zombies coming after you, right? You would, they would have to at least jump over it in some capacity to not get caught on fire. It'd be a really cool, interesting defensive line kind of tool. Number four would be the saw because the saw is the law. But this was Halo's first attempt at really doing like a light machine gun type of weapon that we've seen like in typical shooters like Call of Duty and things like that. I think it plays out really fun. It's just fun just let the trigger go down and then you just start spraying and killing a bunch of stuff. There's like ease of use effect to it that it's just crazy, but it also has a bit of a tactical ability if you burst fire it. Yeah, you can actually extend the range quite a lot and actually have it be a pretty dang good weapon. And for five, I would say the focus rifle. Now I know the focus rifle is definitely hated on, but I think if you retooled it, maybe more as a anti-vehicle weapon, maybe a way to replace the Spartan laser that's not in the game, right? So, but you have to keep a constant beam on that vehicle in some capacity i think that's where you could really shine now it does kind of line up a lot with the sentinel being that's in the game already but i think if you make it a more anti-vehicle focused type of weapon then i think you can have some really interesting gameplay mechanics with it but thank you all for watching i'll catch you on the next one peace out